Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Koki Hama from Japan. And so, uh, today, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'd like to explain OSS compliance and its tools. Yeah. Yeah, first, I will talk about, uh, briefly about OSS compliance. And then I will introduce, uh, some tools. I will also do little demonstration. I will also show you, you know, how I use the tools to build a system in my company. Finally, I would like to explain how to enhance the system in the future. And yeah, last one, of course, uh, Q and session. Okay, let's start. So, uh, open source compliance. Uh, as you may have noticed, I named this chapter, uh, steam from, uh, the book I introduced after, uh, so yeah, OSS compliance in enterprise. Uh, so of course the same is true for the, this session title. Okay. Uh, let's start with a brief explanation. I, I can't listen to you. Really? Oh, uh, I know. I already, uh, now I'm speaking, uh, does anyone hear my voice? Oh, okay. Hi. My, oh. I, I can, I can hear. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh, Hmm. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, sorry for, uh, Mr. Taniguchi. Uh, so, okay, so maybe many people now can hear my voice. Okay, I would like to continue. Uh, so, as you know, uh, use OSS is essential for many, uh, companies. There are many reasons for this. For instance, uh, you can use an uh, OSS that is already completed. This means you can utilize sophisticated software without having to code from scratch. Moreover, in recent years, uh, OSS has become more accessible. Uh, it is even possible to use the appropriate OSS from the internet with just a few lines of additional commands. There are many types. Uh, for example, there are many OSS database applications such as PostgreSQL, MySQL, CouchDB, et cetera, and users can choose from them freely. With this background, it is commonplace for company to include various OSS in their products and services. It is also commonplace to design through OSS in many development sites, thus making OSS mandatory for companies. Now let's move on to OSS compliance. Of course, as many of you know, OSS is not unconditionally available. This is true for both personal and company use. But if you are going to use OSS as a company, you have to investigate various information more carefully. For example, you need to meticulously review the license. There are many OSS licenses, but they all have different obligations. We need to carefully respect the license that OSS has. You need to check the copyright as well. Often it is difficult to find it, but this doesn't mean that they should be ignored. In addition, vulnerability and expert control information are all important and need to be checked. Of course, these receipts here are just an example. It is difficult to deal with everything. I would like to insist that users need to review a lot of information about using OSS. Let's talk about uh, something a little more complicated. Users should consider how to check this OSS information. Then, Checking them, uh, especially when a company uses a lot of OSS, there is a high possibility that important information. 
will be missed without a proper strategy. However, if you start to consider strategy for OSS analysis, you will not be able to find an easy solution. Is there a standardized way to do any OSS compliance? And whose approval is needed? At this time, OSS users may consider using Spark and tools. A lot of things need to be done for OSS compliance, but it's hard to know where to start. Is there a point of arrival in the OSS compliance? We must be careful as long as we use OSS. OpenChain provides some important tips for your OSS compliance works. From here, I will briefly discuss about OpenChain, a project under the umbrella of Linux Foundation, which aims to establish effective and common utilization of OSS and OSS licenses. OpenChain is also working to help reduce OSS management costs, and OpenChain is based on three cores. I will talk about OpenChain a bit more. The OpenChain specification defines a number of requirements. These requirements are for OSS license compliance programs. It has undergone several revisions and 2.1 is now available as the latest version. It is now included in the ISO IEC database list. OpenChain spec is now becoming more of an international standard. At the end of this chapter, let's consider what strategy we can use to improve OSS compliance. For example, you may want to hire more people to pursue these missions. It's easy to say, but I don't think it's something most companies can do right away. It is also important to share information both in and out of the company. Not all problems can be solved immediately, but you can certainly move forward with your mission. However, this alone will not easily improve OSS compliance. It doesn't matter how much information only the person in charge throws. In addition, be sure to prepare your educational materials. Education can also lead to OSS compliance. Fortunately, there are already some education materials in the world. The original title of this presentation, as well as the slide provided open chain are available for this. And finally, I suggest the use of the tool. I'll talk more about it in the next section, but I think it's one powerful strategy. <clears throat> yeah. I would like to show you what you can do with the tools. Many OSS compliance tools have been developed in the world today, and some of them are already in use by many companies. It is difficult to write about all the tools and their effects, but I would like to introduce some of them. The tools speed up the tracking of your OSS compliance works. Some of the tools do license analysis for you. This may be a typical feature of OSS compliance tools that many people imagine. Some of them take a machine learning approach to license analysis. This kind of work is not always done by people who are accustomed to working with the CUI. Some of them provide an easy to use GUI. It also automatically generated the document for you to use when you share the results of your analysis with your customers or your colleagues. It is very useful for those who want to spend more time reforcing the document content rather than creating it. 
The tool can help you with your compliance tasks. Naturally, the use of OSS barriers from project to project. OSS licenses have different obligations to fulfill depending on their uses. That is, companies need to manage not only which OSS are used in which project, but also how they are used. Then, inevitably, you need to keep track of who has reviewed it. Some tools also exist to assist with reviewers. This information tends to be scattered throughout the company. This is especially true for larger companies. If the same content is checked over and over again by different departments, a lot of type will be lost. In order to avoid that, the condition of information is very important and what where the tool will be useful again. Now, I will introduce to what the tool does. Uh, it's not a bad idea to create your own tool uh, with this feature. However, there are OSS tools out there to assist you in your OSS compliance work. It is important to remember that OSS tools can be used at a low cost. You can also share your tool usage know-how with the OSS community. Improving OSS compliance is not just for your company. It's for the entire supply chain. Therefore, you will be able to find members to develop OSS tools with. Yeah, now I would like to introduce some OSS tools in practice. First, I would like to introduce Phosphorzy. Uh, GPL to license OSS developed under the umbrella of the Linux Foundation. Users can use Phosphorzy to facilitate the detection of licenses, copyright, and etc. Phosphorzy includes many such agents and new agents are being developed as OSS. Several methods for outputting the result of the analysis are also provided, including ability to output the result in SPDX format. Let's demonstrate a little bit more in used in practice. This is the uh, start page of the prosology. So uh, you can uh, read uh, some uh, explanation about the prosology and uh, what kind of package you can analysis. Uh, you can read from this page. And when you start logging, you can uh, see the home page. So, uh, so if you want to uh, search, uh, license uh, in your open source files, you can uh, use some several methods. In this case, I would like to introduce the uh, upload packages. So when you upload the packages to the Phosphorzy, you can select some optional analysis. So you can check uh, for that and open it and select analysis. For example, copyright agent, ECC agent, and so many, many useful analysis agents are uh, exist in the Phosphorus. After you set uh, Phosphorus uh, setting, you can upload. While uploading uh, soft score, uh, you can check uh, how many uh, agents are proceed like this. So. If you update it, uh, you can check uh, progress of search engines. So back to the uh, browsing page. So you can uh, find what which you already updated. So now updating. So you can find some license names from the agent uh, discovered, and so. Uh, 
which files are not includes which kind of license, you can check them. For example, if the license name uh, checked, uh, what kind of files includes uh, that rib license in this case? So uh, you can open this and find the uh, file itself and context in the uh, copyright notice or license or emails or any kinds of useful information. So if you back to the uh, top architecture of the file, uh, you can get the list of copyright or email names. So uh, thanks to Frostology engines, uh, you can uh, check almost all email lists in the file packages. After you uh, reviewed, you can make a SPDX format uh, document or uh, files. That is all for Sorosy. <laughs> and next, I would like to introduce SW360. SW360 is a web application that centralizes information related to OSS, which is licensed under EPL2 and manages OSS in units of components, such as license information, export control information, and vulnerabilities. You can manage information in one place, especially uh, you can get results from the phosphorosy. Centralized management of what OSS components each project uses. In addition to the GUI operations, API can be used to be facilitate uh, part registration and to read SPDX data. It, it also has the ability to create license documentation to provide to customers. In addition to the default languages, English, Japanese, and Vietnamese. And other languages can be added it if someone translated the license obligation files. So I will describe the architecture of SW360 in more detail. The information a project has is not a component, but rather a unit of information, precisely release information. This is the reasonable way to manage which version of OSS is being used by each project. Since the license of OSS change depending on the version. So I will show the uh, pr uh, screenshot of SW360. So this is the uh, top page of the uh, SW360. So if you click the uh, flag of the country, so in this case, uh, click the Japan, uh, you can change language. So this means uh, even if you cannot read the English, you can use SW360. And after logging SW360, you can uh, start from this page. This page uh, shows what kind of project you are included and what kind of component you are registered. So uh, you can check this one at the same time. So if you click the component tabs, uh, you can list all the component information. In this case, I uh, click the uh, browser. Uh, so this is written uh, many uh, information, such as when created or who created, and what kind of license includes this license, this OSS. So if you click the license button uh, link, you can read the uh, license techies like this. So this SW360 uh, provides the function import SPDX information automatically. So it is uh, very easy to download this kind of information from SW360. And if you check the project information, uh, it is also some uh, includes some information. 
for example, project name or visibility. Uh, this means who can see this project and when create it and project type. So, and administrator or ECC states, many kinds of information you can check from SW360 project information. So, of course, uh, some projects use uh, a lot of open source software. So, from this uh, linked release and project buttons, you can check uh, what project use what open source software and these versions. This is our SW360s. So after, I would also introduce some OSS tools. So next one is uh, uh, OSS Review Toolkit. And this is also open source uh, tools. Uh, this tool aims to assist with the tasks that commonly need to be performed in the context of license compliance checks. So uh, this tool mainly uh, six functions, analyzer, downloader, scanner, and advisor, evaluator, reporter. So if you uh, use OSS review toolkit, you can get source code, related source code, and uh, these kind of uh, license, and so results of your analysis uh, documents. So any kinds of uh, OSS compliance uh, helped by uh, OSS review toolkit. And next one is the term. This is uh, mainly uh, used for the container analysis. So sometimes it is difficult to uh, find the package or license in the container. Uh, uh, OSS includes the containers, but uh, this term supports these tasks. When you uh, use uh, scan engines, uh, scan functions, this uh, term use the scan tool code kits. Mainly, uh, this is manipulated by the command line interface. And so, I uh, add that uh, SW360 antenna. Uh, this is scan artifacts of the project and download the source for dependencies and validate source code and licenses and make some documents. So, this is one of the uh, SW360 related open source software. So, uh, so if you hope, if you want to uh, integrate it, uh, this one, uh, maybe you can use with SW360. And so last one is a scan OSS. If you are interested in snippet scan in the source code, uh, you can use this. So this result from the open source knowledge database, uh, this knowledge database has a lot of source code and uh, this kind of information. Okay, so next, I would like to explain utilizing tools for open source compliance in enterprise. So uh, my colleagues and I developed it in my company. We have integrated several OSS tools and developed them in the company. Of course, it also includes SW360 and Phosphorosy, which I introduced it in the previous chapters. This tool is readily available to people in a variety of professions. Engineers are not the only people involved when companies use OSS. Of course, legal professionals may perform OSS license checking work. The same goes for manager and the member of the quality control department people. By building a management system that is accessible to all OSS stakeholders in my company, we can easily see who is doing what to do each other. There is one more important point in this system. The tools for OSS compliance are consistently evolving. Every day, new features are added, bugs are fixed, or official manuals are created. We are careful to be among the first to adapt them. I believe that just as OSS compliance is not something that one company can handle alone, that OSS compliance system should be enhanced 
with the community. So now I will explain the system a bit more. It is mainly about user support. Building a system is important, of course, but it's pointless if no one can use them system. And if the user considers the operation of the tool to be more complex than the compliance task, some we came up with some user support. For example, hands-on training, documentation, and multi-language support. I will briefly explain each of them. The effective thing about hands-on is that you can receive immediate user feedback. Users who are new to the Go tool can quickly understand where the, they will stumble. If you hold it online, you won't get a direct your response, but you can do it for a large number of people at once. Of course, as long as there are no network problems. And if you are hands-on with OSS tools, there are some additional advantages. You can exchange ideas with people outside the company on what operation was appropriate. In some cases, officials already offer a hands-on slides. You can also hold hands-on session in collaboration with the community. Next, I would like to talk about the documentation. Hands-on is an ideal way, but users cannot always participate in it. In this case, the document will guide the user. This can also be created with the community. We have published documentation and blogs on SW300 and Phosphology and more. So I already introduced this kind of article, uh, Open Chain Japan. So and some people uh, feedback uh, to me. It is, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Finally, uh, I've talked about multi-languageization. Uh, English is important for OSS compliance, but English is not always native language of OSS users. So uh, even if uh, you are not familiar with English, uh, you need to do, operate uh, OSS compliance tasks. So we have been working on various translation activities. Uh, especially, I have contributed to the community by translating some documents and developing new ones to support a wide range of, uh, wide range of languages. Recently, we did this development for SW360. So where the SW360 community member were very sincere in their response to our code, allowing us to successfully develop multi-language function features. The member of OpenChain Japan provided me with various opinions uh, when I translate English to Japanese. Thank you very much. So uh, the first system we introduced has been developed with the user support with some successes. The number of users the system has increased, of course, but the awareness of OSS has also improved. Many of my colleagues have begun to care about OSS compliance. It can also be said that the very existence of such a system has changed the mindset of users. And at the end of this chapter, I will list what I have done with the community. I worked with the community to develop, get hands-on, and document, and translate. In next section, I will explain how I plan to make the system more user-friendly. From here, I will discuss the improvement of the OSS system. Of course, new features may be developed. That's one way. On the other hand, various OSS compliance tools are released every year. 
choose them well and incorporate what you need into the system. This work needs to be continued. Some communities introduce the latest OSS management tools. We improve the quality of the system by participating in them. Some communities are open to the people of the particular region, while others are open globally. You can participate in both. I want to explain in detail why you should join the community. The knowledge of open source software tools shared by community and by the company's community can be spread throughout the supply chain throughout the community. If affects you even if it is not directly related to your company. As you know, if a license violation occurs, the entire supply chain is immediately contaminated. That's how closely connected the company in the supply chain are. I'm wondering if we can take advantage of this and share information about OSS tools and these usages. Okay, and now I want to try to introduce a uh, community of tools I participate in mainly. There are several, but I will introduce the open chain reference tooling groups. The group uh, holds online conference on web days, and anyone around the world is welcome to join the group as it is held twice a day covering the same topic. We are contemplating how to combine the many tools already available in the world to achieve a workflow. In fact, all the tools presented today were discussed here. Consider to join the mailing list if you are interested in. So, and today I introduced some tools from this one. Okay, finally, I will explain about sharing OSS tools in my words. We can have this discussion with the community to discuss what workflows for OSS compliance management are good and how to achieve them. Such know-how can be shared to improve compliance throughout the supply chain. Finally, a summary. Uh, take advantage of tools to improve compliance and performance. Keep open chain spec in mind then. Also, once the tool is in place, make sure you have good user support. Also, uh, research what tools are available is important. Joining several community will give you a lot of information. Finally, we encourage you to use OSS tools. Then exchange idea with the community on how to use the OSS tools and then have a community discussion about what tools are suitable for you. Yeah. So let's manage OSS by OSS with the community. Yeah. Thank you for uh, hearing my session. Any question? So if you have a question, please uh, post some comments in the chat. <laughs> What's wrong? Hmm. Okay, I will check the track. Track leadership comment no. Mm. No question. Okay, so. Uh, 
Today, uh, ah, after this uh, presentation, of course, I would like to share my uh, this slide. Uh, so if you have a question about this slide, please uh, send me your uh, email. So I will uh, happy to answer them. Okay, thank you for the question. How for three and the W3 uh, 60 talk to each other? Ah, yeah, so. Uh, mm. So maybe uh, they connected with their API. And so if you already have the first of the instance, uh, you can. Uh, how uh, you use a connection, connecting function uh, very easily uh, so from the GUI. Uh, so also they make a uh, hash uh, for the API. And so if you input SW360, uh, you can uh, use the connect to Phosology and SW360. Uh, okay. Mm. Mm, so in more detail, so, uh, so in my case, if I, uh, thank you for the answer. Yeah, so, so if I, uh, okay, so, if you attach some source codes uh, into the SW360, uh, you can um, uh, send uh, phosphorus directly uh, by using IPR. And then uh, phosphorus user can uh, analysis the license or uh, any kinds of information uh, from the source code. And after, uh, if phosphorus uh, user uh, set the status uh, to the uh, closed uh, SSW 360 user can receive the phosphorus results. So like this, uh, phosphorus and SW 300 uh, connected. Okay, any other question? How do you TSP doctrine in compliance process? Yeah, so, uh, mm, so good question. Uh, so in a halfway of to uh, realize uh, this one. So, uh, so at first, uh, yeah, I hope uh, this kind of uh, documentation for, I hope uh, SPDX documentation uh, using SPDX documentation on my tasks and of course includes the open source compliance process. Uh, so, but uh, uh, I tried to do so, but uh, it was difficult. So now I uh, plan to uh, explain how to use or what is SPDX at first. So because then, we set the open source compliance process in company. Uh, so, no. So we need to 
care a lot of, uh, information. So, include this PDX, uh, but, so, uh, sometimes, uh, people, uh, wear no SPDX, but sometimes, uh, don't wear SPDX documentation now. So, I think SPDX, uh, compliance and, uh, uh SPDX documentation and the compliance process is, uh, very, uh, how to say, it, uh, good, uh, combination. Uh, and, so, if I use, uh, SW360, uh, SW360 imports the SPDX information, and, uh, for storage is also same. So, uh, not, uh, defined specific way, but I try to realize this with, uh, uh, SW360 and uh, Phosphology and other tools. So this means, uh, so if I set the compliance process with the tools, uh, if tools already supported SPDX documentations, uh, user automatically uh, need to care SPDX documentations in open compliance processes. Hmm. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Similar stage, yeah. So we are in the middle stage too. So, but I think, uh, if we continue to improve this one, uh, we can, uh, establish, uh, because now open chain specification or SPDX, uh, become a very, uh, global standard. So, hmm. A lot of people, uh, hope to do so. And, uh, so recently, uh, my colleagues, uh, changed their mind. Uh, so I think, um, it is uh, difficult, but, uh, we can realize, uh, or utilize SPDX and the related tools, uh, uh finally. The questions? Hmm. Okay, I would like to close this session. So if you have a question, uh, please send me a 
mail. Okay, and so if uh, like the Slack is also okay, so I would like to answer all question. Yeah. Okay, so I'll close it. Thank you for attending. Mm.